Hey YouTube, another video and today I'm going to show you a circuit about reading and writing into memory, random access memory. Before we start, let's see what we have in the circuit. We have the memory chip itself, which is an SN7484AN and it's a 16-bit memory. So that means that we have 16 bits and if you compare it um, to the one that you have in your computer which is probably a couple of gigs then you understand the size that we're talking about we have two dip switches 4 bit two LEDs which indi will indicate um, which value sits in every memory cell or flip-flop and here we have two buttons which will help us write new values into the memory either a 0 or a 1 and the way that the memory works is pretty simple you can see right here we have this matrix and we have 4 X inputs and 4 Y inputs and by feeding a certain value so for example X1 and Y1 we're addressing cell number 1 and we can assign a value to it either 1 or 0 and this is the way that it looks inside this chip so by selecting by providing highs into the, these um, address pointers we can address either a single single cell or we can address an entire row, row and uh, set every uh, value that we want inside so it will also set all the the row entirely with a single value like 1 or 0 but um, let's see how it works so right now um, our memory has been powered on and when you power on a random access memory all the flip-flops they go into a random state so if you just start going through the memory you'll get random values that you didn't put inside them but first let's write into our memory so I'm gonna write row number 2 which is a 9 and it's comprised of 1 0 0 and 1 and the way that we're, I'm gonna do it is first I'm gonna select x2 so here we have the x input switch and I'm gonna put number 2 to high and now I'm going to select Y1 so that we can address this cell and here we have the Y inputs and I'm going to set it to 1 as well so right now you saw that we get a 1 here and that's a random value I didn't put it in there it could be that once we go to number 2 it will also have a 0 in it but it could also be that it will have a different uh, value like number 1 but just to show you I'm going to set it to 0 now so right now we've set x2 y1 to 0 and I'm going to set it back to number 1 and now I'm going to lower pin y1 and I'm going to move to the next pin which is y2 and y2 you can see that it also has a 1 inside but we want to set it up with a 0 so we're going to change it to a 0 and now we're going to move to Y3 so I'm going to lower Y2 and I'm going to put Y3 to high and again Y3 also received the 1 for some random reason and we're going to set it to 0 and we're going to move to the last bit which is number 4 and it also received the 1 so we're going to set, leave it at that we can just change it to 0 and change it back to 1 and now just to prove a case I'm gonna lower x2 and I'm gonna raise x1 and I'm also gonna raise y1 so it also received randomly a 1 and we're gonna set it to 0 and now I'm going to lower both switches and I'm going to read again 
the x2 line starting with y1, 2, 3, and 4, and let's see if it retained the value. So I'm first going to raise up x2, and let's see. So once I raise y1, I should receive a 1, and once I raise y2, I should receive a 0, and y3 should also give me a 0, and y4 should give me a 1. So let's see if it's correct. When we raise y1, we get a 1, so it retained a value. And when we raise y2, we got a 0, so that retained a value. And when we raise y3, we also get a 0. And when we raise y4, we got a 1. So that's it. That's how you work with a the very basics of memory, larger memory chips, um, they have the same mechanics but you need to start using counters like binary counters and um, they will count to enable you to access um, larger arrays like this and they are also made with basically just multiplying these kind of chips and they're arranged in a certain way with gates and, and decoders for binary values. But that's for the next part of this video series. I'm going to call this part 1, dealing with just the basics. And part 2, um, we will handle a 64-bit memory and see how to work with that. And then we'll take it on from there. So I hope you like this video. And um, you, you will find the schematics and the way that I've built it on my website which is in the description and if you like my videos please subscribe and thank you for watching I'll see you next time